like what were the conditions we talk about changing the individual like what were the and don't tell the same road story you tell all the time what were the conditions at the origin that truly like made you take the first step so i'm, I'm it's 2009 and uh i'm you know like nearly a decade into what was in my mind at that point my life this is what i am i'm a hospital doctor at stanford working for a big multi-specialty group I teach, I do this, identity, identity, this is what this is my thing. I was so um, bored in my time off because I was on shifts basically when I wasn't charting an epic that I was so bored that I was picking up stupid hobbies like audio gear, like high-end stereo gear and just becoming neurotic about it. Like all this energy going into this stupid, useless hobby that brought me no joy. It just brought me anxiety. And then at work, I was watching everything fall apart, like more and more computer, less and less teaching, less and less mentorship and shamanism and more of just click, 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 click algorithm. Uh, but I think I had deceived myself enough that that was how it is. Like, oh, I do this for another 15, 20 years, then I retire then I'll be happy. Uh, or, you know, that's just what you do. This is just life. You work and the harder you work, the happier you are, right? But none of that was really falling into place. And I had my kids and that changed everything a little bit. But uh, I found myself like reading books about string theory in my spare time because I was like, what's the meaning of everything? <laughs> like I, everything seems empty. Like I'm doing all this, but I don't even understand what, what, all this is. So when that starts happening, you start to wonder like what's going on in general. And then I made the mistake and this was the thing. So I don't often tell the story publicly. So Tony Shea, the guy who runs Zappos had just written a book called Delivering Happiness about his experience with building a culture at Zappos. And he had gone to school to Harvard with my wife. So they knew each other and I knew him and so on. And we were in Las Vegas one Thanksgiving, Las Vegas of all places. We lived in the Bay Area. And he invited us over for Thanksgiving dinner or something like that. So we went with our one-year-old daughter, Nina, at the time, or two years old, and, and said, and, and, and he, was, he was radiating this kind of joy about all the things that were gonna happen. Like, I've made a billion dollars. I have this amazing company. We're gonna transform Las Vegas. We're gonna do all this. This is my calling, this is my path, this is what I do. And I remember he looked at me, he's like, so how's everything at Stanford? It must be cool, your parents must really be proud of you and this and that, and you must be really happy. And I remember that was the first time someone asked me, oh, you must be really happy. And I'm like, I had to sit there and go. And I remember it just came out, I was like, no, I'm not happy at all. <laughs> I've never really even been asked that. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm not happy at all. This is, feels so wrong. Like this profession that I thought was my calling has fallen into this chaos and I myself am not the person that they, that they think that I'm supposed to be. So what, and I remember I, I just told, like, what do I do? <laughs> you know, I'm looking at this guy, he's like a billionaire. I don't know him that well. I'm just like sitting at the table, what do I do? And he's like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, if I'm being honest, I'm really good at teaching and making people laugh. And I don't know, I would probably put videos on YouTube or do something stupid like that. And he said, then why don't you just do that? And, and I remember going, okay, that's just dumb. You don't make money doing that. I have all these expectations. I can't be a doctor and do that. I went, we flew back to the Bay Area for the next three months. I went into a depression, like it was, because so, it had been held off by uh, years of self-deception. Like, oh, you know, if I just get a bigger, nicer car, we get the house, I have kids, I'll be happy. Uh, maybe if I become partner, I'll be happy. Okay, now I'm making a lot of money. I'm happy now, right? No. Okay, I'll get better speakers and then I'll have beautiful music in my life. No. Fuck. Three months of just suicidal depression. Like, my wife was so worried about me because I would, I would just come to bed at like, like two in the morning, just like dragging. 
and just detached and miserable. And, and I think she suspected it was because of the visit with Tony where I was like, I'm not happy at all. And it all just unraveled. And that, I remember the night it was like, right before my birthday, 2010, beginning of the decade, I was like, fuck it. I went online, I created a Twitter account. What names are available? Z Dog MD, no one has that. I went through a bunch of different, placebo, this, that, nothing. Z Dog MD was available. I now have the Twitter account. I now have the Facebook account. I now have the YouTube account. Okay, let me upload a video. You know, graduation speech, colon video. Graduation speech had been up under a different name. I re-uploaded it. And the next thing I know, I, I was like, you knew it right away. I was like, even if there's like, it got 200 views or something. I was like, this is, the end of this phase of my life. Like, I don't know what's gonna happen. And I was deluded. To be honest, that it was delusional thinking. How, how can that be? Some idiot Stanford doctor like puts a dumbass video on YouTube and says to himself, clearly, I'll never forget what I told myself. I was like, this is the beginning of something transformative. And I don't know where it ends, but I know this is it. I, I know it, I know it. And, uh, and it turned out to be true. And, and ever since then, it's been nonstop, like doing generally what I feel called to do. And when I don't, I feel it, I feel it. I start to really get depressed or burned out and then I have to adjust course. But being in, having the awareness now to go, oh, this is not me, I'm not doing this anymore. I've had phone calls, dude, with people that want something from me and I've told them to fuck themselves on a phone call because it felt like I'm being pulled back into this world. Now maybe that's, that's an overreaction, but that's where I've gotten now. And it took me a decade after unplugging from that matrix to be able to do that. And people are like, oh, you're, you know, you're lucky you were able to do it because you have this talent and that talent. I don't have shit. All I had was the ability to stand up and say, you know what, I'm not afraid. I, sorry, I'm terrified. I'm not gonna let the terror stop me from doing what I know I feel intuitively is right. And so that's all it is. That's what I tell people too. Just, just, you know the right answer. Why are you asking me for advice? You know what the answer is. You're just afraid of it. And even now, if you ask me, oh, what are the next 10 years right? I'm probably terrified of what the answer is, right? Because maybe it's something crazy, right? But that's, that's how it has to be. Did that answer the question? I don't know.